All teams. <laughs> but I've actually found uh, people in the Philippines are... Okay, so something I've noticed, in England, people didn't like magic much. No. They're a bit more closed off to it and, oh no, I don't, yeah. I don't like being fooled. Yeah. And they feel like it's a, you're, you're setting to them a challenge or something, or they feel it's for kids. In Hong Kong, people are way more open to it. Oh, you, you play magic? Play, play magic? Yeah. yeah, I play the magic. Okay, that's a new <laughs> term to call it. So yeah, I uh, I play magic to them, and they, wow, yeah, they go crazy. I know, I know. It's um, it's weird how different countries at different times, different things are in fashion. Um, yeah, doing magic in Asia, mm. very very popular. It is, but I've kind of found over a while maybe it's the way I'm performing, but uh, that's kind of. No, it feels like I'm performing back in England now. Okay. So I'm, maybe I'm just performing to too many expats, I don't know. <laughs> but, well, um, like in the Philippines, they were really receptive. Oh, wow, yeah, like everyone, um, as the term we use in Asia, gives you face. Yeah. Everyone gives me face. Everyone's so nice, warm and welcoming. Yeah. yeah. Um, even if, I, I, I think they're very polite, they're over polite. They, they don't, they're too polite to say no. <laughs> even if they don't want to watch it, they'll say, yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, in Hong Kong, you know, people are a bit more like, you know, if they don't want it, it's a no. Yeah. In England, it's always a no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to say that about England. No, no, it's, 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 it's very the, different. It's the whole psychology of it, because you've got to pick someone who's going to be willing to play along. Because as adults, yeah. we know that, that it's not real mm. as adults. Or some adults, actually some adults feel think it's real, but most adults will know that it's a trick. Yeah. But so you've got to get someone who's going to be who's who's going to be excited enough to play along and and go along with it. Absolutely, and, and must course, be hypnotised by it and and yeah. be have their mind blown. And I know some guys will try and force uh, you know performing onto people who don't want to be performed to. Mm. They clearly say no and say, oh well, I'm actually hide. Let me show you something quickly. Mm. Um, I do it in uh, a more subtle way. If they don't want to, like, if I'm holding something in my hand, like a pack of cards, for yeah. instance, I'll say, hi, how's it going? They say, no, thank you. Mm. Okay. I'll make the cards disappear. Yeah. I dust off my hands. I'll say, sorry to bother you. Yeah. And yeah. that raises an eyebrow, like, oh, wow, that was good. Yeah. Oh, I, actually, you got my attention now. Can you show exactly. me something else? Exactly. Don't say, do you want to see a magic trick? Yeah. Do something that is magical, catch their eyes, and then you've got them. But I'm totally uh, respecting um, their wish. They, they don't want to see it. Okay, yeah, I'll put the cards it, away, yeah. and I'll leave you alone. I'm very sorry to bother you. Do you find the difference between approaching men and women? Um, for me, because I'm not very good at magic, I always felt it was easier for me to approach women. I found I was able to uh, just force my personality onto them, and they'd have to go, "Oh, yeah, it was great." Sort of, sort of like a mental, sort of a mental kind of. Um, it's about it's about status, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, which, I, is a, which is a bit of a cheap trick, but ugh, I'm not I'm not an expert at magician at magic, so I need to use all the cheap tricks I can find. If I can slightly use my, a status as a male over a over a woman, mm -hmm. then yeah, I'm gonna use whatever works for me. Um, I don't think male or female has no, any difference really. I mean, sometimes I will go up to a table. I'll be up, you know, I'm, I may approach a woman and she'll just like kind of shoot me. I hope that the doesn't husband. sound really sexist. By the way, it's just something that. As, as no, not, really, it, not very good at. So I'm not. Magic isn't my, it's a specialty for me. Mm. And I, I find that, especially, say, say there's a, a white guy, if I do a magic for a white guy, I always kind of feel that he's trying to catch me out. If I do a trick to an Asian woman, I feel that she's more ready to, to play along with it and be, and be amazed. Yeah, so, so the um, differences in culture. Yeah. And uh, mannerisms and etiquette and so on. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's very. There's, there's quite a big divide. Yeah, between Westerners and um, uh, Easterners, I'd say. Yeah. So yeah, two completely different worlds, and um, it, it's funny trying to find your place within that. Yeah. And how you fit, and how you can approach people. But yeah, for me, um, sometimes I may approach a lady, and she'll kind of you know shoot me towards the husband. Mm. Sometimes I'll approach a guy, and she'll he'll shoot me towards the wife. Yeah. So it, you know, every, everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody's different. Every couple is different, mm -hmm. and you never know what you're going to get when you approach each table. But yeah, you, yeah. I don't know. With some practice and some time of performing, you you can look at someone and kind of gauge immediately. Oh, yeah. you know, are they going to be a dick? Or are they going to be grumpy? Are they going to say be, yes or it no? It has to be almost instant. You've yeah, just, like, you've got about two or three seconds just to figure it out, and and then you go in. I remember I was doing. Um, 
was it the IT Society at uh, the Hong Kong Convention? Or, anyway, I, I was doing a gig at this uh, very big exhibition hall, and I went round to this one table, and this woman said, Oh, magic, I love this. Um, I used to have a Paul Daniels magic set when I was younger. And I said, Oh, me too, that's how I got into it. Yeah. And uh, she said, Yeah, I, 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 I never pursued it. I said, Yeah, I, I never grew up. <laughs> <laughs> I just persisted with it. And she's like, Yeah, oh, yeah, I love that. So I was like, Cool, I've got someone on my side. And then she was heckling me. Oh, no. She went, Oh, I saw that. Yeah, you. you kept it in your hand or I saw you slip it in your pocket Annoyed. I'm thinking <laughs> wow you just totally like won me over and then you just heckle me through <laughs> I don't think she realised she was heckling me or she realised what she was doing yeah. but yeah um, a note to listeners out there if you're saying how you think it's done to a magician or out loud or you're trying to uh, catch them out that's heckling yeah whether you realise it or not that's heckling <laughs> um, and yeah it's funny working in a British pub you learn how to deal with hecklers yeah. or people who are just trying to mess with you yeah. and yeah it's called audience management and it's something I've picked up so quickly working in the pub because yeah. someone might start off sober or drunk or whatever if someone does whatever, try to heckle you what do you do? I stare them down Yeah. I stop what I'm doing Yeah. look at the person look at the rest of the crowd you know with my eyebrows slightly raised or you know I, I don't really have an expression on my face I just kind of yeah. have this like really sort okay. of look on my face yeah because the rest of the crowd is into it yeah. So there, as long as the guy, the guy, the heckler knows that he's the other one out, yeah. then that's going to work. And if they keep interrupting me or, you know, I, I leave it a few times because once or twice I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. Mm. And after a while, if it just keeps disrupting, I will stop and just look at everyone. Yeah. And I'll leave the crowd to gang up on the guy. Exactly. And it works every yeah, why time. Not? Yeah, why not? It works yeah, every yeah, time. Because yeah, yeah. they're enjoying it and they turn yeah. around and say, shut up. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Piss off, whatever. Sense, I'm like, yeah. thanks, guys. Yeah. And I, I'm not the one who has to do it. I'm not the guilty one. Brilliant. I don't yeah, have to be rude good. or anything. That's great. I like that. But yeah, specific. that's if I'm being paid. If I'm not being paid, I don't F off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I'm down the pub, like, mate, I'm doing this for free. Yeah. I'm doing this for your entertainment. Like, if I don't like it, piss off. Do you need to have a table when you're doing your close up? Say you go to an event, there's no tables uh, at all. Um, I, no. I, I try to keep everything in the hands. Yeah. Or if I need a table, Okay, right, I need your hands. Oh, but yeah. I've got a drink. Okay, I'll take your drink, give it to them. Yeah. Now we've got a table. Right. Now both your hands are free. That's a good one. Uh, brilliant. And it's great because, um, again, this is audience management and you're doing this to CEOs and mm. God knows who else. But it's like for a moment, you're not the boss, I am. Yeah. But you, you don't want it to be like that. You want everyone to be on the same level, but it's like you, you do have to have a certain persona and like it, it's the control of people. You're going to say, okay, I'm boss. Mm. But mm. we're all on the same level. I don't want to be too um, egotistic or anything. Yeah. You just you, you want to control the situation, get everyone to calm down, be quiet, and enjoy it. Because mm. otherwise, if you know if they don't follow your instructions, they're not going to know what to do. Yeah. How do you deal with the occasional mistakes? Go with the flow. People yeah. don't know you've mucked up. Yeah. People. A lot of people. Um, forget that they've never seen magic before or they've seen it on TV but they don't know what you're going to show them yeah don't tell them what's going to happen no so whatever happens that's the magic that you were going to do anyway you... if I muck up or drop a card I'll say okay um, what's this your card and I'll turn it over from the floor and they say no that would have been good yeah you know it's a gag you yeah. just turn something into a joke yeah, yeah, or yeah. He kind of string off as in like maybe it is part of the trick. Mm. Or if I do muck it up, then I um, oh there was this once uh, at the uh, the hotel grand opening I was talking about earlier. I went up to this guy. He was standing on yeah. his own. I thought, oh, let's cheer him up a bit. He looks a bit lonely. Yeah. yeah. So I spread the cards. He picked the card and he placed it back in the deck. And I said, hold out your hand. I said, is this your card? Which is like a um, a sucker punch. Mm. So the first time it's always meant to be wrong. And they say, yeah. no. I turn it over and then place it on their hand. Yeah. I say, are you sure that wasn't it? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, think about your card. Mm. And I'll turn over the card in your hand. Mm. He turned it over and it was different. He said, well, that's pretty cool. But that wasn't my card. <laughs> like, oh, crap. Yeah, yeah. It was a joker. Yeah. I said, ah. I, I thought, oh, crap. How can I get out of this? So it's a joker. Oh, a joker's a wild card. That's why it didn't work, because the jokers were left in the deck. Yeah. So I went through and removed the other joker, put it in my pocket, and I said, right, let's start again. <laughs> I thought, well, I don't know what I'm doing here. How am I going to get out of this? He picked another card. Yeah. 
And he just went, dude, high five, that was awesome. <laughs> I was like, what just happened? Yeah. I still to this day have no idea what happened, but I'm guessing he picked the same card twice yeah. out of sheer fluke. Out of 52 cards. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, actually, the first time it was out of 54 cards because I let the Jokers in, yeah. So um, the next time he just picked it and I went, wow, that couldn't have gone any better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so some, if you don't tell the audience what to expect, you can pretty much turn whatever happens mm. into, in inverted commas, what, yeah. you said, what, you were expo- what was supposed to happen. And another time I was sitting at a uh, pub uh, with a friend and um, I just learned this new effect and I thought, okay, let's, uh, let's try this out on this person. And I couldn't do the effect mm. because I saw an opportunity that presented itself that I couldn't yeah. pass up on. Yeah, yeah. So I said, okay, you take a card, you shuffle the deck. And he was shuffling it in a certain way that I could see the bottom of the cards. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I actually knew the card he picked. Yeah. Um, whether I forced it upon him or um, I got a peek or something. I, I think I got a peek after he... But you could see the bottom card and the other cards. Yeah, <laughs> and then he put the cards down. I said, you know what, I'm not even going to touch the cards. Yeah, yeah. I said, how cool would it be if I could make your card jump to the top? Yeah. He went, what, right now without touching? I went, yeah. He went, I'll be pretty impressed. I went, turn over the top card. And he turned it over I said, he said, that's not it. I said, no, 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 turn the whole deck over. Yeah. So you turn the whole deck over and there it was like on the bottom or the top now. Yeah. So I just, I'll play with them a little bit. Great. And he went, you never touched the deck. What the hell? Yeah. How is that possible? Yeah, yeah. I shuffled it. I picked it. I put it back and I shuffled. Yeah. How? <laughs> just opportunity. I saw an opportunistic moment and I went for it. And those moments are the best moments ever. Yeah. Because they seem completely off the cuff. Yeah. And... There's so much impossibility to it. And yeah, so like you said, how do I deal with mistakes? I either go with it or I make up something. Yeah, why not? And, so and my usual thing would be to um, make the card go to my pocket. Oh, yeah. that's not my card. Oh, what was your card? Oh, you know what? Well, this didn't work. It went into my pocket. Yeah. Or it went into my wallet or whatever. So I won't explain that, but yeah, we, yeah. we have ways and means. And then you can find it <laughs> in your wallet. Yes, yes. Um... How important is your persona? What is your persona when you're when you do it when you're performing? I like to be a sort of happy, go lucky guy. A yeah. little bit silly. Yeah. Um, I, I try not to be too silly. There's an air of seriousness about you know the environment you're in and the people you're working with. Mm. But I try to make sure people are having fun and you know giggle, laugh. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. I have a few stock lines I use and a few gags. Mm. Um. How about when you stare at the heckler? Is that are you? Can, are you taking quite a high status? Um, or is it still quite not friendly? really? Not I, really. I, I, I try not to take myself too seriously, yeah. to be honest. As a performer, yeah. you, you shouldn't really, yeah. unless you're like a real artist mm. and you're a stage performer. But even then, like, it's your love, it's your passion, it's your interest, yeah, yeah. it's what you find fun. Yeah. If you make it serious, then I feel like you're kind of killing it a bit. Mm. Because if anybody challenges that then you're too defensive or you, you get offended too easily. Yeah. But people say, oh, can you make my wife disappear? Can you make my bill disappear? And, oh, you know, <laughs> they think they're being clever or funny and, you know, because they've never met a magician before. But it's like, ah, oh, I've heard this a thousand times. Every single person I approach, <laughs> yeah. I get the exact same things. I get on but, the unicycle. Where's your other wheel? <sighs> Did you, where, yeah, where's your other wheel? Got the bike half price. Yeah. In the unicycle. Oh god, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I suppose you get asked all the time, or do you ever drop a ball? Or yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. And um, yeah, same for me. The same stock um, questions. How did you get into it? How long you've been doing it? How long does it take to learn? Mm. Um, and there's no. Well, everybody's different, and like take like for instance, um, how long does it take to learn a trick? Well, when you're beginning, a bloody long time. Mm. But after actually, a while... That's a good question, actually. How long would it take from when you've started studying a trick? Mm-hmm. Um, for me, if I was doing a magic trick, I would... When I'm ready to do the trick in public, I might even wait another week or two just to really make sure it's totally in my muscle memory and I don't have to think twice about what I'm doing. Yeah, for me, um, it's exactly that. 
So because you've got to be a hundred percent, hundred and ten percent. It's just got to be. You can't be trying to remember what's the next step of your trick, can you? You you could like it's got to be just totally, just, just happen. Yeah. Right so the the, there's one trick that I persisted with every single day for about, oof, I don't know, months and months, maybe three to six months. And I'd do it hundreds of times a day. I was infatuated with it. Mm. And it was a routine where you shuffle the aces into the deck and then it's purely by um, sense of touch mm. and uh, remembering where... It's a, quite a mathematical trick mm. to just shuffle the cards, uh, the aces into the deck. And then there's a sort of a system that you need to learn of how to cut exactly to those wow. aces. Wow. So you left up half the deck yeah. and then on the face will be an ace. Mm. And so you do that four times to all four aces. But do you have a bit more interaction? You wouldn't just cut to it. You say, okay, give me a number. Yeah. Okay, right, I'll count down to that number. Okay, um, okay, you try. You, you try and cut the deck as well. Yeah, and yeah, the other people yeah. can do it. And oh my goodness, that took me so much practice. And I, like I said, I was infatuated with it because I thought, wow, this is literally... You, you do what you'll say you're doing. You're yeah. cutting to the aces. Yeah. And at first, it was incredibly difficult. I could never get it 10 times out of 10. Now, I get it 10 times out of 10. Now, I've done it enough times over the last six, seven years. If I mess up, I know how to get out of it. Yeah, because yeah, I've messed yeah. up so many yeah, times. Yeah. And I think, oh, crap, what happened there? Mm. And, um, it, you know, you, you don't let on that you've gone wrong. You yeah. just kind of... How, wiggle your way out of it somehow. How long should a card trick be? I remember once trying a card trick, and I really like this card trick. I learnt it, I learnt it, I learnt it. Then I went and did it in public, and I found the card trick just way too long. <laughs> yeah, I've fallen into that trap. I was like, oh, but wait for another three minutes. It's really amazing at the end. How long, how long do you, are your card tricks? Oh, depends. Um, but it can't be too long, right? Some if, of these tricks are too long. Yeah, if you're talking like about a, a proper trick, not like um. Uh, a cool looking move yeah. if you're on about like a, a proper routine yeah. um, I don't think it should be longer than a few minutes yeah yeah. because I mean we're I, I like to say we're in the um, I don't know PlayStation age is uh, over it's more <laughs> information age or smartphone yeah, just flick 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 ADHD age yeah, everyone's yeah, got yeah. ADHD yeah. you know yeah. no one has a, an attention span longer than a few minutes yeah, yeah. and when you're performing, you're approaching a crowd of people, you've got maybe five, ten seconds before you've lost their attention. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, I agree. I, I don't know, it's like a rule of thumb. It's like, it's around that time, maybe a bit longer. I don't it's know, really everybody's nice. different. Yeah. But um, you've got to kind of establish who you are, what you're yeah. going to do, and whether they want to see it or not. Yeah. But it's funny because in magic, a lot of magicians say that laymen, lay audiences, aren't qualified to give you an answer. Ah. Uh. Okay. Which I think is quite big headed to no, say. No, because they are the audience. But You're doing yeah. it for them. Yeah, okay. exactly. And it's like, well, what right do we have to you know, say that they don't, they're not allowed to have an opinion? They, yeah, they are. Yeah. But what gets me is, okay, so the suspension of disbelief. Mm. Okay, so when you're a child, you have this, um, you know, everything is magic to you. Yeah. You don't know how things work and everything's magic to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I listened to this podcast uh, yesterday and this guy was saying automatic doors you know yeah. that's magic yeah. but people just say oh you know no it's a sensor and whatever yeah, and it yeah, opens yeah. but I mean you can't see anything when you walk up to the door for it to literally trigger open mm. on its own that yeah. is quite magic yeah. uh, but nobody really reacts to that however if you put a deck of cards on the table and you wave your hands and then they cut on their own, yeah. and a, one card flies out, people go crazy. Yeah. And I heard this podcast yesterday, I thought, that's really interesting to think about that. We have a lot of things, like we have helicopters and planes. It's, ma it's magic. Really, yeah, people it? flying in the air, people like swimming, or, you know, sailing underwater in a submarine or yeah. whatever. And this is all, you know, it's a given these days. But when it comes to magic, something so trivial as things like this for magicians... We think, oh, you know, once we know the secrets, it's like, nah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's simple stuff. And a lot of the time, it's disappointing for a lay audience to uh, hear these secrets. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think when you do find out the secret, 
something that you wanted to know for ages. Oh, that's how it's done. Oh, yeah, it's really well, disappointing. Then, I think that's, is that all it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a big part of why we keep the secret because you really don't want to know. <laughs> you mentioned kids having a sense of wonder. Was kids shows one of the things I was supposed to ask you about an hour ago? You say no. Uh, yeah, later. God, we've been Go here on. for an hour already. <laughs> what, um, what was it about the kids shows? So, yeah, I, I've started this um, new line of business. Um, I'm calling it WizKids Magic. Yeah. Uh, this is going back on when I was younger. I went to this thing at a local primary school called Fit Kids. Yeah. And it was like an aerobics class for kids, but it was just like assault courses and mm. like running around. Yeah. You know, burning off energy and having fun. And um, yeah, so the kids were set, spelt with a Z on the end. Yeah. So I spelt mine WizKids like Wizard Kids. Yeah. Ah. Um, but <laughs> it, I'm not sure if it's a mistake or not because there's this uh, rapper from Africa called Wizkid <laughs> and I had like a thousand <laughs> like likes I had a thousand likes from Africa on my page and I thought at first wow this is amazing I'll get so many likes <laughs> and then I kind of thought from Africa <laughs> I, mean, I, I have no prejudice against that but it kind of makes it look like I paid for likes or something yeah because it just doesn't look right and then I found out yeah so there's this rapper called Wizkid yeah. after a bit of research ah right I thought <laughs> uh, I'm in a bit of a predicament and I thought no I'm going to keep it yeah. just to Hong Kong because my business is Hong Kong yeah and it, it's not around the world yet so yeah. I I had to say goodbye to all those uh, likes, unfortunately. I got rid of them because it, it just doesn't seem real enough. You know, my other page, uh, Matthew I'm Magician, um, on Facebook, that's got, I don't know, 300 likes, and it's been that way for years. I'm not really trying to increase the yeah. likes or whatever. It's just there as a place for people to look at my yeah. work and a place for me to put my portfolio. And, yeah, within two months, was it three months, I got 1,000 likes. And whiz kids, what the hell? No. That's it's weird, isn't it? It is. One, one of my podcasts got six thousand hits in a week, and I have no idea why. Maybe someone in Africa thought maybe there's something in Africa. Maybe there's a rapper in Africa called Meet the Entertainer. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Who, knows? Who knows? Who knows? You also said um, the wrong gig. What, what was that? <laughs> Oh, goodness. So, um, yeah, so, like I said, um, I started this thing with kids, and I thought, well, you know, I, on the side, I teach English. Yeah. Well, I don't say on the side. On the side, I do magic. Uh, my main job is teaching English at the moment. Something I've done for a long time, and I feel like I've fallen into a bit of a trap with it, mm -hmm. and I want to get out of it. But it's not getting out of teaching. It's teaching English I'm getting a bit bored with. It's not really my thing. It's not my passion. It's mm -hmm. just a means to get by. And I want I, I, to, so I have a lot of meetings with this guy, Zenith. We talk about a lot of theory about magic and, you know, where can we go in the future? You know, where can we go as a business? Mm. So we've been looking at restaurants and uh, actually just, um, we both landed a deal with the Ritz Carlton. Ooh. So um, whether it's the highest restaurant or whatnot in the world, but I know Ozone above that on the rooftop. Um, that's the highest bar in the world, so hopefully that might lead on to the bar as well because that's owned by Ritz Carlton. Yeah. So yeah, five star luxury hotel and restaurant got yeah. a foot in the door there. Doesn't sound like the wrong gig. No, but uh, sorry, this is uh, leading on to things. So um, <laughs> yeah, we're talking about where magic's leading. So I thought actually this is a good idea. Like maybe we should look at restaurants and how about teaching. It? magic yeah well I'm a teacher and I do magic why not mix the two why not teach magic to children yeah a lot of people have pitched the idea of teaching magic through English mm. many times and I just disagreed with the idea right I, it, it wasn't for me it's other people's ideas and again it's the whole English thing I, I don't want to do that so I, I want it to be about magic not English okay so yeah that's the idea is that you're teaching ma magic workshops, and while the kids are learning magic tricks, they're also learning how to speak English. Yeah. Okay. Um, for me, that didn't sit no. well. But now that I'm getting into it, um, I'm actually just about to launch uh, next month. I've got uh, students signing up at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's just a 45-minute workshop on how to have fun with everyday objects. Mm. Because for me, growing up, I had box sets. And once you lost one thing, because as a child, you lose everything. Yeah. You've got so many toys and you never tidy up after yourself. You, you're always going to lose something. 
And if you lose something, you can't do it again because mm. of that one part is missing. Yeah. Or you lose it all. Yeah. Or somebody, like, so many times I've been busted because I use a gimmick yeah. growing up. Yeah. Oh, can I have a look at that? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> or you just say, oh, yeah, all right, hopefully they won't see the gimmick. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, they found it straight yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, oh, that's how you did it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm from the school of thought of everyday objects. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I use gimmicks, but I prefer the side of hand, the skill. Mm. Because next time somebody might give me a pack of cards and say, Dude, I've got a pack of cards. Show me, show my friends that trick that you showed me last time yeah, with yeah. this deck. Yeah. Or you know, if people just want to not catch you out. They want to challenge you to see if, like, if you really are that good. Mm. Like, oh, use my coins, use my cards, use this. And now I can sit at a table and I, you know, I'm looking at this notepad. I could screw it up, and make, turn it into a ball, and use that ball for something. Yeah. Or I can use this pen. Use that for something. Yes. Or maybe, yes. Um, I don't know, uh, headphone tip. cables or string, paper clip, rubber bands. I, I can pretty much do stuff with any of that stuff. Yeah, it's a very good tip. So I want to pass this on to children. So no expensive props to buy, yes. nothing to lose. Yes. And it's enhancing their creativity. Because mm. let's be honest, in Hong Kong, there's uh, not a lot of creativity. Study, is there? study, study. Homework yeah. is all copying. and. Yeah. So, yeah, like... I'm kind of uh, marketing it as that, you know, magic with everyday objects. Stuff you can find around the home, in the classroom, even in your pencil case. Yeah. And, you know, you're ready at any time for anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With anything. Um, yeah, so with this, I've actually said no to a lot of um, birthday gigs in the past. And now I'm starting to think, oh, okay, I'm used to children now. Maybe I should start taking on some children's gigs. Yes. But I pitch it as a workshop, not right. a magic show for children, yeah. because like oh, I'm not. It's not I, I'd either be too silly or not silly enough. Mm. I, I I don't have that sort of mindset mm. mindset to perform to children of you know how much is too much, how much is not enough, yeah, and yeah. so on. So your idea is to pitch it as a magic workshop for children. Yeah. Children's so uh, I uh, I've done a few of those so far, and then um, the last one I did, worst gig. <laughs> oh my god but it's a learning curve although it's horrible to go through these experiences they are a massive learning curve what and happened? so <laughs> everything everything happened everything that could go wrong did go wrong yeah come on so is that the Aberdeen Aberdeen Marina Club oh yeah so yeah quite a swanky place I'm sure you've been there many times so many birthday parties my they've got, they've goodness they've got about they've got about 12 birthday parties and 12 different venues in that place every single Day of the week. That's the Day first week. time I've been to that place, and my goodness, it's like a whole two, three floors dedicated to children. Like yeah, a jungle and then, and then gym, you go, a zip line and doors. There's another two or three floors dedicated crikey. to children. Crikey. Yeah, so I only saw a small chunk of it yeah. then. And uh, yeah, so I was in the small room, probably about the size of my living room actually, yeah. which isn't that big to be honest. And they had tables either side, and a massive balloon set up of like um, Pokemon, like yeah. Pikachu and yeah, you know, yeah. bigger than me, made out of balloons. Yeah. And the name, so it was, it was uh, two brothers, yeah. both had um, similar birthday dates, uh, different ages, so I think it was like um, five and seven or yeah, something. Yeah. I thought, oh, five's a bit young for me. Because yeah. I, I have a, like, a lower age bracket, yeah, so it's like well, six exactly. and up. Yeah, exactly. People say, oh, I want a magic show for my five-year-old. Mm. You're not magic. A five-year-old doesn't really want a magic show. Not really. Oh, they. That's the thing. Adults and kids think they do, but no, they want. They be, can't understand it. No, it. I mean, like I said, everything to a child's magic. Yeah. Just the fact that I've got facial hair, they're like, "Whoa!" <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, what is that? How did yeah. that get there? Or I might burp or something, and I'm like, "Whoa, what was that?" Yeah. Uh, you know, um, when you do something like I remember. Um, so I, I, I tried to read up about the psychology of children and what goes through their mind, how do they see life. Yeah. And my girlfriend, she's a speech therapist, so yeah. she knows, um, she's, you know, she's got a master's on this, she knows how children think, how mm. they develop, mm. because she uh, looks for the problems of why aren't they able to speak here, yeah, or yeah. maybe they have autism mm. or Down syndrome, how can I help them uh, develop their vocal cords, right, how right. can I give them confidence. Yeah. And um, yeah, so at the age of three or four, the fact that a child is holding an object in a closed hand, they think everybody knows that they can see what they have in their hand. Mm. 
they don't have the concept of everybody else has different perspective, different That's views. That's right, yes. So, yeah, like, if you do a magic trick to a child of that age, they're like, well, yeah, of course. Of course it's going to happen. It's magic. Magic's real. Yeah, yeah. But as they get a bit older, they start realising more about the world and how things actually work and all don't work. Mm. And, yeah, then they start thinking, oh, okay, that was interesting. Mm. And as they get older into teens, oh, I don't care, or yeah. whatever. Um, actually, you'd be surprised. I mean, fidget spinners are a big thing now. Yeah. And I've been scratching my head trying to think of what can I do with a fidget spinner? Maybe I should try and, you know, get my hands on one. I hear they're quite expensive. Not really. I don't know. There's, there's lots of copies. Yeah. Cheap ones in the market. So I think, oh, you know, maybe I should buy one and uh, develop a trick with that that I can teach the kids. Yeah. And I saw this other guy do one on YouTube and he did a brilliant routine. It was a SpongeBob routine, but yeah. he took the, uh, the little um, things off the ends. Uh, they had lights on the ends of the uh, fidget spinners. Okay. So he popped off three of them, turned off the light, and he sponged all things like, okay, two in the hand, one in the pocket. All oh, right. How many left in my hand? Oh, no, it's three. Yeah. And he kept doing that. I thought, wow, that's, that's, that's great. Again, yeah. everyday objects. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, moving on. So they had the Pikachu up behind me. Yeah. Um, I wanted to do it at the side or something because it was too narrow. Yeah. I said, oh, no, no, no. We want you standing in front of the balloons. In front of the giant Pikachu balloons. Yeah. I thought that's the worst place to be. And um, before I arrived, I remember, because I got past this on from another guy. I said, okay, they know it's a workshop. It's going to be like 30 minutes. Yeah, 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 fine, fine, fine. And I totally forgot to ask how many kids. Because oh. I've done about 26 kids before, and that was just ridiculous. Yeah. Trying to give them all a rubber band, yeah. trying to make sure they all fight too many, too many. So what I normally do is I have like a 10-15 uh, like minute magic show, and then I'll go on to teach them a trick afterwards. Yeah. So yeah, all the adults were sitting at the side tables, mm. talking amongst themselves. Yeah. All the kids were in front of me, and I was told a few days before, 60 kids. Ooh, I thought, man. you're kidding me, 60 <laughs> kids? Well, I can't really do a workshop with them, I'm going to have to do a show. Crap, why didn't I fine-tune these details beforehand? I'm going to die. But to be what? fair, Matt is quite new to this stuff, okay? Yeah, kids shows. Oh. I mean, I'm not new to kids, but doing magic for kids is just a completely different animal in itself. <laughs> so you, there's 60 kids? Uh, well, not quite that many. There were so much for them to do at this venue. They're yeah. just running around yeah. crazy, high on sugar and jumping into the ball pit and yeah. running the zip yeah. line. Yeah. So I maybe had about 20 or 30 kids in front of me. And um, so I started my music, couldn't hear the music. And the speaker is quite loud. Like in my apartment, yeah. I'm sure the neighbors would want yeah. to complain if they. Uh, Got a little bit annoyed with it. I could barely hear the music. The adults were being so loud. Yeah. I asked the adults to please, you know, be quiet. Could hear the music a little bit. And so yeah, I wasn't in a position I wanted to be. I was in front of the Pikachu in a very narrow part of the room. Yeah. The kids were literally at my feet, and I thought yeah. this is not good. <laughs> I want some space between me and the kids. I want some sort of a show, a, a, a stage. And I wanted the birthday boys to come up. So I started this uh, trick like the vanishing bandana which yeah. is actually a vanishing banana it's a really funny trick where you play a, uh, like this uh, instructional uh, audio disc that you yeah. get from like a magic club or something yeah. and it goes horribly wrong but it comes out okay at the end yeah. that was okay and then I got the two birthday boys up on stage mm -hmm. okay here's two long ropes I want you to make sure that you know they can't come apart they don't mm -hmm. break or anything yeah. You know, maybe uh, try with someone, you know, sitting down. I turned away for two seconds. I saw the rope around a girl's neck and the two boys pulling. <gasps> I was like, oh! <laughs> what got me was there was an adult right in front. No, oh, sorry, right behind the little girl getting strangled, just watching. I thought, what, yeah, what's wrong with you people? It? You've been so noisy and you're not controlling the kids. Oh. And then... So anyway, I got through that trick okay, but I was just mortified to see that. Yeah, I think I think rope tricks with kids are hard because invariably I find they'll start an impromptu game of tug of war. Yeah. And and the more I try to put it back to get it back from them, the more they want to pull it away from me. It's very hard to mm. ropes. <laughs> and um, yeah, then I tried to do a disappearing water in cup trick where okay. you put it over your head and you tip it upside down and it disappears. Yeah. I couldn't even get that far. No. I filled up two cups, gave it to the boys, 
I said, right, okay, keep it above your head. I turn around to fill up my cup, look back, and they're like, oh, what's all this powder inside? Oh, they're just flicking it at the other kids. I saw a little God. bit in one of the child's mouths. I thought, oh, God, I don't know how toxic that is. <laughs> but, okay, well, I just grabbed the cups off them and said, okay, we won't do that. Let's move on to something else. Oh, no. I was burning through my repertoire. I thought, fuck, <laughs> oh. oh. And then... Um, have a bag of balloons. <laughs> yeah. No, it's time for balloons. Oh, they had a balloon artist oh, there. No. So I, um, I don't do no, that. No, it's thing. time for a coloring competition. I, I, I can't remember. What was the other thing I tried doing with them? Oh, let's God. Play, let's play music with statues. So stand still for half an hour. But I, I couldn't control the kids or control the adults. <laughs> so every trick I was doing just flopped miserably. <laughs> And uh, yeah, the sweats just came on. <laughs> oh, oh God, what am I doing here? I can't wait to get through this. I'm dying. <laughs> These kids are literally murdering me on stage. <laughs> and this little girl kept scuffling up to my feet, just looking at me, like tugging on my leg. I'm like, no, oh, please don't do that now. Can you go back? <laughs> no. <sighs> and yeah. And um, so at the end of it, I had a conversation with, I'm not sure if she was a mum or the host or an organiser, I, I, I don't know what her position was in this whole event. So she was saying at the beginning, okay, when you finished your magic show, I want you to bring the kids outside here for the birthday cake yeah. cutting. Yeah. Okay, sure. So it got to that time very quickly, fortunately. <laughs> Um, so luckily, what time did What did you say for a full 30 minutes? Uh, something like that. It got to like 20... Five twenty-six okay, minutes. Okay, you managed to get out of here. Somehow, I'm dying. Let's get you're out. Getting here. somehow towards the thirty-minute mark. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, okay, everybody, stand up. Great. Okay, let's go outside to yeah. the birthday cake. And um, so they're all following me outside the room. I'm like, oh, thank God, I'm out of there now. And the woman who spoke to me at the beginning, told me to take him outside, went up to me, started screaming, "What are you doing? Oh. What am I doing? Oh no! I'm taking him outside. What are you doing? She said again." Like really screaming at yeah. me, and she had so much anger in her oh, voice. No. I said, I'm taking him outside, like you said. No, I didn't! What? You, what? Am I imagining things? You, you told me to. Say, okay, right, kids, let's go back inside. Birthday cake's inside! Alright, yeah, we'll go back inside then. <laughs> she was so angry with me. Oh, um, horrible. I, I'm thinking it's maybe because I, I was terrible. Um, and secondly, because I took them outside and. I, I, I have no you still, idea. You still don't know. I still had no idea. So I swear to God, she told me to go outside. Yeah. And then you know she started screaming at me. I said, "Okay, kids, go back inside." And then <laughs> I packed up my stuff and just legged it. <laughs> I didn't even bother changing back. I thought I just want to get the hell out of here. <laughs> and I, I met up with my friend afterwards. <laughs> and um, I, well, actually, he was there, kind of standing back and watching, and um, he was just like, "Yeah, let's just go." And then he got a long phone call oh. from the, I'm not sure if it was the same woman or someone else. He got a long phone call from them, and because uh, it was all a Chinese crowd, all uh, bilingual, yeah. so to speak, uh, fluent English and Chinese, and. Um, yeah, he, was, he he put me down very lightly. He just said, ah, they're just disappointed. Oh, I'm like, well, dude, like you asked for a lot more money than I charge. I would be disappointed too. <sighs> so, oh well, I, I got decent money out of it. Not I, as I know, much as I normally. Sometimes it's, it's, it's like, really tough. Sometimes it's really, really tough. I felt horrible. I know, it's, it's the worst. It is the worst feeling in the world when everything goes wrong. And then after that, you're thinking, when have you, I just destroyed this boy's image magicians? I know, magicians when, when you and, think that... that by, by doing the show, you've actually made the party worse. It's like, oh, God, but it's, it's just going to happen every now and then. Yeah. And I really want to blame the the kids, the parents. Uh, I, I want to put all the blame on them and say that it was their fault, it was <laughs> bad. But as a performer, as a professional, it's your fault. Yeah. No matter what, it's your fault. Yeah. It doesn't matter how bad they are or, you know, whatever. It's like, you but, should be better. You should be able to manage that. Yeah. Um, yeah, as much as I want to put the blame on them, I can't, really. <laughs> oh, my word. Let's, yeah. not, let's not end there, though. Let's no. Do, let's, let's do the randoms. I mean, these things happen every now and then. Yeah, absolutely. Bad shows. I, I've had some really terrible shows. Shows where I just have, have left, and I've never, ever chased them for the payment. I just don't want to... Oh, ask. luckily, I got paid up front. You got paid up front. I, I felt well, bad. I, 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 I wanted well, to find the whole I, money. I've, I've had events where it's gone so bad, I mean, so, so bad, that it's just a total suicidal disaster. 
I've had that. And that they will happen every now and then. Yeah, you're just like, do I have the courage to ask for the money? No. Tell between legs, run off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just just try to get out of there. I've had, I've had gigs where I've been halfway through and I thought, it's an hour show, and I've got halfway through and I thought, how on earth am I going to do the next half an hour? And how on earth do I keep carrying on doing this crap? Yeah, uh, <laughs> Why don't I have a normal job? God, yeah. <laughs> I'll just do the randoms. Just okay. do the randoms. randoms. Corporates versus weddings. Do you have a favourite? Weddings. There you go. Why? Uh, corporate. Fine. Everyone's so stiff. And, you, you and go, you've just yeah. been paid to interrupt people. Weddings, people are there to have a good time. Absolutely. Yeah, I've exactly. had like birthdays and weddings. I have such a ball. Corporate, yeah. really, it's a little bit stiff and awkward sometimes. Already. Um, have you ever done a hen's night? Uh, no, for but, um, foreigners, hen's night is um, the bachelorette party. Yeah. Okay. Um, not quite, but when I was working at the nightclub, uh, you know, we inherently have a few uh, hen parties, stag parties come through. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as the PR, I'd, you know, I'd have to meet and greet, sit them down, get them some drinks yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I have a few things in my pocket and I just, you know, jazz with them. I'll say, yeah, yeah, I've got a few tricks, whatever. You ever been propositioned, handsome young man such as yourself? You ever been propositioned, like, oh, here's my phone number. Do you ever get... Uh, no comment. No? Oh, yeah, you're, you're a girlfriend. Well, let's just, say, let's just say you meet a lot of people doing what you yeah. do. I leave it at I've that. been propositioned by women and by guys. Okay. But that was mainly about 20 years ago when I got old. <laughs> Uh, costume choices. Do you always go for classy? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, mainly because of the events I work at. If it's what about when you were at that circusy clown thing years ago? Did, have ever clients given you a costume said you've got to wear this costume for this event? Yeah, I've done and it once or twice. And, and there's like, no oh. pockets for the magic tricks. Yeah, so you're just like, really right, hard. okay. If I wear my normal pocket, uh, my normal trousers underneath, cut holes. That's exactly. Then I can get in. Have you, but yeah, um, so I've, I've done that. I actually, did that at Halloween when you dress up to go out. Clubbing, yeah. just yeah. like cut slits in your outfit. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't want to twice and just. Nah. Ever had an audience who doesn't speak any language that you speak? Yeah. <laughs> it has happened a few times. Yeah. Oh, you just do stuff you don't need to speak. You can use actions and yeah. whatnot. Is there a trick that you like to do that's really, really, really visual? I have a favourite which isn't always appropriate for every event I do, and it's um, the uh, the rubber bands where they melt through each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. love that one. Um, but yeah, over time I've kind of realised, yeah, maybe I shouldn't do the, you know, get out rubber bands at a classy, high-end corporate event. Yeah, Because it yeah. looks a little bit like, the fuck you doing? Yeah, 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 there you go, yeah. It's true, it's true. Some but, hands down, important to the classy events. Hands down, this is one of the best reactions I get from this trick, and it works any language. Yeah. Because um, I, I do it in their hands as well, so I make two gun symbols yeah. at them. So, you know, point at them, open yeah. hand gesture. Do this, mm. and then they do it. Curl your fingers in, great. Have the rubber band there, thumbs down. Oh, okay, it stretches quite a bit, so don't worry, yeah, you can yeah. stretch more. Yeah. Okay, watch. Yeah. Although you're speaking, you know they don't understand you. They can see it. Yeah, you just feel like you kind of need that narrative. What prop do you always carry with you, or almost always? Uh, it used to be cards, but... I always um, carry a thumb tip. No matter what the event, there's always a thumbs up. Oh, a TT, you mean? Oh, a TT, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not Sorry. an exposure podcast. No, that's right. Um, to be honest, I think most people know what a thumb tip is. It, Actually, know, if they don't know what a thumb tip is, they still won't know what a thumb tip is. Well, it's that's the thing. Thumb. A lot of people uh, <laughs> may have heard of a thumb tip or palming a card or whatever, but I've used a thumb tip and palmed a card when people are fully aware of it. Yeah. But it's... A case of using it properly and you you know you like doing it properly if you do it properly no one's gonna know what the hell you're doing even if they know the methods yeah, yeah. and I've um, not quite a show-off thing but to prove to people that okay so you know about palming let me show you palming now if I take this card off the top you can see it's not on the top anymore yeah. but it's also not in my hand you yeah. see the palming happens when you don't expect and they're like oh wow okay I like to give people like a little bit of an insight into magic, but without exposing it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, well, it's an interesting time for magic now because pretty much every single trick, if you go to YouTube and Google it, you can find a tutorial. Not every single trick. Well, a lot of tricks. A lot of tricks, yeah. yeah. And it's um, well, but it, I YouTube, don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. Not really. No. Because 
okay, it's it's there for anyone to see. There but was you a time have to be when... really infatuated and obsessed to find the exactly. answer. Exactly, no one's going to bother searching away. Not unless it's someone like me, yeah. who will actually go out and do that. And, and that's how I got into it. And if they do, good luck to them. Well done. Mm. Yeah. Comedy versus skill. Do you have a, comedy versus skill? Do you have a favourite? Um, for me, if it's going well, then I'm skillful, and it starts to go wrong. Suddenly, I'm a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I think with the skill, inherently produces comedy. Yeah. Because people actually laugh in disbelief or they're just like wow oh, you know wouldn't it be funny if it uh, landed in your pocket well actually yeah, it did yeah, like yeah. you do it like David Bain and pull it from your flies well actually yeah <laughs> you know you're not being funny or purposely funny you just I don't know go with the flow like I say I, I always try and go with the flow and um, learning sleight of hand magic but of a lot of everyday objects you um, afford yourself the opportunity to do that yeah 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 and so, you know, people give you something on the fly. Oh, I'll do something with this. Yeah. And you do something stupid or whatever. Or, oh, I'll make your cigarette disappear. I'll flick it and then, you know, I'll I make it look like I'm going to put it in my hand. I flick it across the room and just like <laughs> close the hand and say, look, watch. They see it happen and they think it's funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so like, you know, I, I don't have to try and be funny. It, like the skill in itself is quite funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it makes people laugh. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Magic naturally makes people laugh. And one thing I didn't talk about is how I got into magic. Go for that, yeah, you are. Sure, yeah, I'm sure people might be interested in that. Okay, how did you get into magic? That's a very good question, Ben. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought it up. So when I was about five, between the age of five or seven, I can't remember, we had this family friend who used to always come over. And he used to do these weird and wonderful things, like he used to um, put his thumb up to uh, his... Uh, his mouth, yeah, and as if you like you're tensing your arm, and he'd blow into his thumb, and his bicep would go up and down. <laughs> I thought, oh, that's quite cool, and yeah. I tried to do it. You know, being like a five year old with zero muscle, yeah. nothing happened. Mm. So, it's <laughs> <laughs> my thumb. And then um, I would love to say that he pulled a coin from behind my ear, but he didn't. He did actually show me a coin trick. He laid three coins onto the table. Yeah. He would walk out of the room, he asked me to touch one coin. Yeah. I'll choose a coin but touch it. Yeah. And when I'm ready, when I'm done, call him back into the room. Yeah. So all my family would be there and everything. Yeah. He'd come back in and he'd wave his hand over every single coin. Yeah. And then he would tell me straight away, Ooh. Ah, I'm I'm getting quite I'm getting something off this middle coin. Is that the one you chose? Mm. Whoa, yeah, yeah, it is. And then he did this other one where he would say, Okay, stick out your hands, watch your hands. I'm going to put the, the coin, it's going to go up and down, and the last time, I'm going to place it into your hand. Yeah. I, years later, now I know how that trick worked, but he taught me the first one with the three coins on the table. Oh, great. And, um, yeah, he let me in on the secret, which is, well, it's okay to say, because it's more of a bar trick, yeah. I would say. His wife was signalling <laughs> which one it was. And when I found that out, I wasn't disappointed. I was even more impressed. I thought, wow, that's really cool, actually. <laughs> and from then on, I got uh, Paul Daniel's Magic Set and yeah. the Magic Circle box set. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of... I, I was into it in primary school because a few other kids were. And then my teens, well, being the grumpy teens as everybody is, you kind of hide it. You don't want to be yeah. bullied for any... Uh, particular reason at school so you yeah. kind of keep it quiet uh, in the army I didn't really do it much um, so it wasn't until I was in my early 20s that I picked it up again because yeah. I thought oh, you know, I don't really have an interest or a hobby everyone else plays football yeah. and spends time doing this or that I don't really feel like I have much well I have magic but that's a you know that's a back that's a back burner I don't really uh, play with that too often and then I thought one day you know what I'm going to nail this. I'm going to buy some books and I'm going to nail it. Yeah. I'm not going to learn tricks with trick decks or yeah. gimmicks. Yeah. I really want to learn the craft, what it is. And uh, working in a pub at the time was the perfect place for it. Amazing. And um, I joined a local club. I went to lectures. Um, I was even a member of the, the, uh, the Magic Circle in London mm. for a short while. Um, they offer under 18s. Where were you in the UK? I was in a place called West Sussex. It's... Okay. Um, the place I lived in is smack bang on the 
sorry, smack bang in between uh, Portsmouth and Brighton, okay. right on the coast, yeah. south coast. Um, yeah, so I was um, very close to London, where the Magic Circle was. I didn't go there too many times. I think I went there like two or three times. You did Davenport's? Yeah, I went yeah. to Davenport's. I met the legendary Ali Bongo. Yeah, yeah. I had a lecture from him. He was quite a dark, <laughs> tall, gothic guy. Oh, really? Yeah, he, like he always looked, um, you know, dressed as the gentleman, like, uh, you know, tuxedo with a fez hat on. Oh, right. Uh, do you know who Ali Bongo yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say it's probably more your time than it is mine. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he was like long leather coat. He had like a long finger ring, like gothic thing yeah, with yeah. a point on the end yeah. that covered the whole finger. And it's like, whoa, this guy's quite <laughs> dark. I never knew that. Yeah. And he was, um, he was very short with us youngsters as well. I was like, children, be quiet. <laughs> no, I, was, I suppose uh, age does that to you. Uh, yeah, and um, I met some uh, really cool people at the Magic Circle. In fact, um, Matt Edwards, who's on um, Britain's Got Talent at the moment, he oh. got the golden buzzer. He was uh, he was there as well. Wow. And seeing his name all these years later, it's like, oh, wow, I remember that name. I remember <laughs> that guy. And, uh, yeah, I've... I pretty much met all my idols in Magic, I'd say. Bar Paul Daniels, who sadly passed away yeah. about a year ago now, a year and a half ago. Because um, he's yeah. the man who started it all, really, uh, apart from uh, Uncle Bob. Yeah, Paul Daniels is very, was, was massive. He, he was like the go-to TV magician in the 80s. Yeah, he was running for like 15 years. years. Yeah, in the, on BBC. Yeah, yeah he, had the long, he was the longest running TV magician in the world, I think. Wow. And... Looking back on him, I used to think, oh, actually, Paul Daniels is kind of silly. He's a bit of a silly character on TV. But when you actually learn more about him, he was a master in the true sense of the word of his craft. Mm -hmm. He learned magic with everything. He learned everything with silks, everything with thumb tips, everything with uh, thimbles, everything with coins, everything with matches, anything you can think of, stage routines, cards. So if he was called up to say, oh, um, Paul, we need you to do this tonight, can you do it? Yeah, yeah sure, no worries. Yeah, well, I mean, he, he had a TV show for like 15 years. Yeah. So he had to invent a whole new, whole new routine, half hour routines for the TV show on a weekly basis for mm. years. So he and, said, yeah, he has to learn everything. And he's the king of originality because he would, look, he would take um, a and trick. And he was, he was funny as well. Yeah. He did things like, um, he could, he could ad lib. He could mm. tell jokes like a silent comedian. Like he, he, I remember he brought a volunteer out uh, once, a uh, woman, and uh, he said, what's your name? And she said, Pat. She said, oh, you don't, don't wear a jumper with, that, with your name on the, on the front. <laughs> Pat your wrists. Oh, God, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah he was very, he, he did everything. He had, and his yeah. chop cup routine is brilliant. Amazing. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the original video of the chop cup routine, it's, he's just going so fast, and he stops halfway through and says, you're not following this, are you? <laughs> yeah. You're like, no, I'm not. <laughs> but yeah, like, um, naturally very funny, and he had a way with people. It was brilliant. And uh, he would always encourage people and get them to say his name. Like, you can learn so much from Paul Daniels. Yeah. Um, if you really take the time to sit down and study his work. Yeah, and, yeah. Because so. he had a, such a wide range of magic. And he also, he had, um, like I said, he, he was able to, he had the skills of a, of a stand-up comedian doing crowd work. Mm. He could really get a rapport going. And, yeah. And, uh, you seen Copperfield, I saw it, Vegas? Yeah, yeah. I, so I was in Vegas, uh, when, about two months ago, yeah. and I saw uh, the legendary Copperfield show, oh. David Copperfield. Um, yeah, that was uh, something else. Yeah. A few of the things I can kind of think, oh, yeah, 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 I know this one. Yeah, oh, cool, like, he's done it that way. And the others, I just thought, I have no idea. <laughs> and as a magician watching something like that, you're... You're having this internal battle. How is it done? How, how is he, you know, oh, okay, I'm following. No, 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 no. Just sit back and enjoy, enjoy it. Don't it. Yeah. analyze it. Yeah. Just watch it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, he just, he just completely cracked open my head and blew my brains apart. It was just incredible. Um, and for 15 years, yeah, he's, uh, he's still going strong. And in the same day, I saw the uh, legendary funniest man in magic. Mac King. Oh. And oh my goodness, he's like a sort of a goofy older guy. But um, 
he's just got such a charm and humour about him. And it's almost like he's not trying to be funny, but he just is. <laughs> and ev- like I've heard a lot about his show. Every single show is different. Mm. It's all like packaged the same, yeah. but because he interacts with the audience so much, and something different always happens. Yeah. Um, for instance, he chose a boy from the audience to come up on stage. Yeah, yeah. Two boys came out, and he went, "Oh dear, this is awkward. <laughs> um, how do I deal with this?" Yeah. And you know, he didn't want to bring one up, one boy up yeah. who he originally pointed to and yeah. upset the other boy. Yeah. So he's like, um. Okay, right, I'm going to use him for this one, you come up for the next one, yeah, yeah. okay? And then he gave them both magic books and so on and so mm. forth, um, magic box sets. So they both walked away happy and something in their hands. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so he says, uh, okay, I'm going to do this uh, trick. And um, I need, it's a penetration trick. So I need you to help me aid in penetration. <laughs> so what, what's your method for uh, aiding penetration? And stuff like this. And he's saying it in such a way that you just can't help but laugh. And, you know, the guy might uh, tap the thing and says, oh, a firm smack on the bottom. Okay, that makes <laughs> But at the time, oh, I don't do it any justice whatsoever. But, yeah, if you're in Vegas, go and check out uh, Matt King and uh, David Copperfield. Saying that, while in Vegas, I bumped into America's Got Talent winner, who was a magician last year, uh, Matt um, Matt Franco. There we go, Matt Franco. I was walking out of my hotel, which is a casino. Every hotel is a casino in uh, Vegas. So I was walking out of mine, and we're on Fremont Street, where all the buskers are, and yeah. I saw some terrible magicians on the street. <laughs> but that's a different story. So, um, yeah, so I walk out, and um, I see this guy, and I think, he looks familiar. So I, I quickly Google his image and I'm like, yeah, that is him. Like, speak yeah. to my girlfriend. Is that him? Yeah, 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 that's him. Go speak to him. Go say hi. <laughs> I'll go off and do my own thing. You spend as long as you want. Yeah. Um, she's pretty cool like that. She's like, eh, you, you go and do your magic thing. I'll keep yeah, myself yeah. entertained elsewhere. I don't want to stand there next to you being bored. So I go over and speak to him and friendliest guy I've ever met. Yeah. So friendly. And that's the thing about the magic community um, with the exception of people like uh, Copperfield, it, you can pretty much meet all your idols. You can hang out with them yeah. after a lecture. or I mean, you can get lectured. You can go to their lecture, learn their secrets. You can buy their videos, buy their books, learn yeah. from them. Or if you're in the right place at the right time, you can meet them, hang out with them. Uh, like I said, with the exception of Copperfield, because he's just like mega star. Yeah. But yeah, no. Um, in many other performing arts you wouldn't get that chance no like singers you wouldn't hang out with uh, Michael Jackson no. or um, Mariah Carey or no. I don't know first names coming to my head or uh, even if you're uh, a theatre actor you wouldn't meet all the big Hollywood stars yeah, yeah. but in magic well, you can more or less meet those pop stars you can meet those movie stars yeah. if you're lucky enough to be hired for those events as I've been hired for many events in Hong Kong and never known who the hell's there yeah and in Manila uh, when I'm hired to go over there, I meet the richest people in Asia. Yeah. Like billionaires, like number 26, number four, Gosh. the Forbes rich list. Yeah. I'm like, wow. <laughs> uh, head of tax. Um, actually, I did perform at a presidential event. The president was there. Yeah, yeah. Not there. the current one, the previous yeah. one. Okay. Um, at the time of this uh, podcast, yeah. So I think it's President uh, Panoy, Panay. I, I really <laughs> don't quote me on that. I really don't know. Um, but yeah, the airport in Manila is named after him. Yeah. So I was there when the president was, and I thought, wow, if I get to perform to a president, that's maybe I can put up my fees. <laughs> that's right. Put that on your CV, on your bio. Yeah. And yet everybody at this event was a somebody. Yeah. So I said, oh, just go to the VIP tables. Oh wait, everyone here is a VIP. Um, just do the owner <laughs> and the manager, and you know what else, and the president. I'm like, okay, <laughs> not much pressure. But, uh, yeah, every time I go to Manila, it's always a big deal. Yeah. Always, like, billionaires, uh, who's who of the Philippines. And, again, I have no idea who they are. <laughs> Luckily, they give me an agenda. Yeah. And I'm smart enough to Google the names. Yeah. So, who's the MC? Who's the host? That's a good idea. Um, okay. The, the venue. I always try and do as much homework as I can about every venue. Yeah. And I try and remember as many names as possible. Because oh. this really impressed... Um, not just the um, the guests, but the hosts. 
because they yeah, feel like they, that's a you know, they invest idea. a lot of money like into you. You don't just want to rock up and say, okay, I'm here to do the job, right, out I go. Like, oh, um, so I, I heard this place cost X amount of money and it took this amount of time to make, that's quite impressive. You know, just dropping a few things like yeah. that, people are like, wow, you do your homework. That's true. And, it's um, like me when I do my podcast. I pick up some random bit of information I picked up about someone off the internet, and I'm like, oh, you've done so much research. No, it was just 10 seconds of <laughs> random bit of information I found. But yeah, we're in the information age, like I said, and um, you can find out anything. And like, even if you meet someone, you learn their name, walk away, you know, Google their name, Facebook, yeah. whatever. Oh, okay, that's their date of birth. I'm going to do a mind reading effect on them, whatever. Like, yeah, why not? Yes. Like, whatever. Like, you, you can get that's, a, that's interesting, yeah. Cause I if don't it's do a, mind if reading. It's, if it's a celebrity, you can, you can actually Google things and then use it in the magic tree straight away. You can, yeah. Wow. Uh, not just uh, celebrities, but like... Um, so well, every the CEO of, the, of this company. Yeah, I mean... Everybody puts a lot of information about themselves on the internet these days. Yeah, that's interesting. And I don't, I don't put my birthday up, I don't put like my street address yeah. or where I am at but certain... other people do. Yeah, all yeah. the time. You think, yeah. well, that's just kind of a lot of ammo there for me to use. You can do magic tricks. Yeah, you can, like, you can learn their birthday and say, oh, um, I'm good with horoscopes. Uh, yeah. I'm guessing you're uh, Sagittarius or Gemini or whatever. They're like, yeah. wow, you got that in one. Yeah. You're amazing. That's brilliant. I like um, that. So, yeah, you can do that on the uh, the person that's hired you. I wouldn't yeah. suggest doing it on everyone, but... Yeah, I like or even it. like when they pay you, uh, depending on how you get payment, maybe they pay you by a credit card or whatever. You've got a credit card machine, I don't know, yeah. or some sort of system to use on your iPhone or computer. Um... You can say, okay, um, think about your credit card number. Okay, think about the digits. You, do you know your credit card number? In fact, get it out now. Okay, I want you to look at part of it. Um, and, you know, you can just tell where they're looking, which part. You think, okay, right, I've memorized their <laughs> credit card number or whatever. I've never done this, but it's, you know, it's a principle I've heard before. Yeah. Actually, this is something that Darren Brown did. Oh, right. And then someone said, oh, okay, let me get your Darren, credit card. Darren Brown. Yes, there you go. So, um... Someone um, asked Darren if they could give him his credit card and said, okay, do it with your credit card now. And like, he always buys stuff off the internet, as every yeah. magician does. Yeah. He always buying books and yeah. tricks, whatever. So we know our credit card numbers yeah. inside out. Yeah. So I just reared it off and went, wow, you're really good. <laughs> <laughs> but you read my mind again to, uh, you know, get your numbers. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, you go with the flow. You spin it any way you want. People don't know how magic goes. Go with the flow. Matt if they're Owen, really into it. Thank you very much. And thank you. Brilliant.